It seems like with this one change, Nintendo has solved one of the biggest complaints in Breath of the Wild. The new crafting system introduced in the latest Tears of the Kingdom trailer changes everything we thought we knew about the game, and I'm here to tell you today that I figured out just how deep it goes and exactly how it's going to work. So stay tuned because trust me, you don't want to miss it. Before we get into it though, if you guys could do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to reach 100k before Tears of the Kingdom comes out, and I have extensive plans to cover that game on release. So if that interests you, consider subscribing, it only takes a second, and it would help me out a bunch. Thanks! Alright, so by now, the newest trailer has been analyzed to death, but something that I glossed over was the new crafting system. After going back over the footage, some things started to stand out to me, and I want to share what I believe is the answer to all of the questions about the crafting system in Tears of the Kingdom. So, let's just start with the vehicles. We've got a car of sorts, a hot air balloon, and a glider. Initially, these things don't have a ton in common, but the key here is in the details. All of these vehicles share a few common elements. For example, the green slime that seems to stick all this junk together. You can see it attaching the fan blades to the metal base, all over the car attaching the steering column, the wheels, and even the wood together, and then you have that big string of slime attaching the balloon to the wooden basket. So the first question I had was, what is this gunk and where does it come from? And I think the answer has been staring us in the face for a while now. The vials on Link's hip. Initially, I figured they'd be used to power something like Link's new magic arm or augment weapons. But I think that idea would actually conflict with the open air nature of the game, and with this new crafting mechanic, it makes much more sense for it to be used as a resource that Link can then utilize to build optional vehicles or gear. And yes, I said gear. Although Nintendo really focused on the vehicles in the last trailer, I think there's a very high possibility we'll be able to craft our own weapons this time around. Again, the details hold the key here. Take a look at the similarities between these parts. The base of the can where it connects to the staff has this weird symbol. This same symbol can be found here and here as well. Myself and others have speculated that this symbol is probably a connection point, meaning you can attach things to it using the crafting system. Additionally, look at the dragon head on the car. It seems very similar to the flamethrower we saw in the last trailer, albeit a little bit bigger. In fact, all the new weapons we've seen thus far share a similar design aesthetic to the vehicles, having green or grayish green and gold elements, the only exception of course being the larger wooden metal parts used on the vehicles. And I have a theory that it might even extend past just these Zonai looking elements. In the most recent trailer, we saw a group of enemies that looked upgraded, I guess you could say, over their counterparts in Breath of the Wild. I'm talking Bokublins and Moblins with extra horns, spikes, or helmets. I wouldn't be surprised if those are drops that can be collected once you defeat them, and then can be used to build spears or swords, or maybe even add armors to vehicles to make them stronger. Spoiler warning, if you aren't aware, the Tears of the Kingdom art book has leaked online. If you want to avoid spoilers for that, please skip to this timecode on screen now. Otherwise, you've been warned. So it sort of looks like this has been confirmed. Looking at the leaked art book, we can see detailed images of these upgraded enemies and see how exactly these weapons correlate to not just the enemy type, but the level scaling, which seems to work similar to how it does in Breath of the Wild meaning the more you complete the game, the higher value drops from enemies that we're going to see. Just wanted to splice this new information in here while I have the chance. Finally, being slow to get a video out has been useful for once. Anyways, back to the main video. So the next question I had was, well, where do we find these items? Now initially that might seem like a stupid question. The trailer literally shows two fan blades on Death Mountain, and Link finding a tire in the mud, and obviously we can collect drops from enemies, so the logical answer would be, you find them while exploring the world. And yes, I do believe that's going to be the case for some of the standard parts, I just don't think that's going to be the case for all of them. And there are two key scenes in the trailer that make me believe that there are more rare parts to be collected by fighting larger enemies. Nintendo has only shown us two really large enemies with similar design features. This guy from the previous trailer, who just by looking at him shares a lot of design elements with Link's car, like the buds for the headlights and the general color scheme, but he also has that same connection symbol on the front of his torso. Then in the most recent in trailer, we got introduced to this giant golem creature. And listen, it doesn't seem like it's the exact same part used in the glider, but let's just quickly imagine that once you defeat this guy, those boxes break open like the metal boxes in Breath of the Wild. I could very easily see one of the flat sides of the box being used as a base to build a vehicle upon similar to the glider. I understand this golem is made of stone and not metal, but I think you get the point I'm trying to make. These larger enemies that Link interacts with will no doubt be major sources of parts. The parts you get from defeating them will probably be more rare and harder to find, but on the flip side, you'll be able to craft better vehicles and probably even better weapons from them. 
taking another look at the enemies though, you can see they're held together by some form of green energy. It's not exactly a one-to-one -one parallel to the green goop, but I've got two thoughts on this and you can decide if they make sense or not. On Link's car, you can see a giant green stone, which I have to imagine is the power source. Unfortunately, I don't see anything like that on the glider or the hot air balloon, so I can't say it's a constant necessity for all vehicles, but I do think that green goop is a more rudimentary version of the green energy. These enemies are clearly designed and built by an ancient and technologically advanced people. Link, despite being the hero, isn't that, so his creations are more simplistic and require a physical connection using this goop instead of having raw energy bind everything together. I could be absolutely wrong on all of that, but I think there could be some merit to that theory, so I just wanted to mention it. Either way though, I think that's how Tears of the Kingdom solves one of the biggest problems with Breath of the Wild, the weapon durability system. Now personally, I don't mind the durability system that much, in fact, I do kind of hope it returns in Tears of the Kingdom. But now that we can craft our own weapons, I think that's going to be a lot more interesting. Perhaps this means we can build something cool, use it for a bit, then upgrade it later to reset its durability, or just replace parts as we use it to prevent it from breaking in the first place. In fact, I think that will be a huge part of craftable objects. Everything craftable will have durability in some way or another. There's no way that Nintendo is just going to let you build a flyable glider within the first hour of the game and let you use it for the rest of your playthrough. That seems way too overpowered and would break exploration entirely. Instead, I think things will break slowly over time or the more you use them. It could be as simple as the green goo used to stick everything together just giving out and the vehicle or up and falls apart right in front of you. And I think this system is why Link now has an object manipulation ability instead of just magnesis. We saw Link using this power in the trailer to lift up the tire and move this stone object. I didn't really think too much about it at the time because it was similar to magnesis, so I figured we're already familiar enough with it. But now with the introduction of crafting, and the idea that you'll be interacting with objects from wood to metal to stone, it adds a lot of depth to this one ability. Now I'm sure it's going to be somewhat limited, after all being able to interact with absolutely everything seems like an easy way to break the game, but I imagine it'll work somewhat similar to Magnesis where when you turn it on it's going to highlight objects that can be crafted or be manipulated in some way, which I think is a nice evolution of the Magnesis ability. Which brings me to the final question that I had, and I don't really have an answer for this one just yet, but it's where or how do we build these things? Looking at the car, it seems like it's a very involved vehicle, requiring at least 10 or more parts. My question is, does Nintendo really expect us to travel the world of Hyrule finding parts and then slowly carry them back to one another to craft something? I can't believe that's what they have in mind. So there has to be a way for Link to teleport these items or transport them without slowing them down. Unfortunately, I just don't have an answer for how that's going to work at the moment. I wish I did because this is a pretty large concern that I have, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now initially, I'm going to admit I wasn't too thrilled when crafting was introduced because it seems like such an overused mechanic in games these days, but the more I look at how it's being implemented in Tears of the Kingdom, the more it's growing on me, so I'm actually looking forward to seeing how this all comes together when the game releases or when Nintendo gives us more information. I'm still crossing my fingers that we'll get some form of a treehouse presentation soon enough. But whatever happens, I think that's where I'm going to end off this video. So once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.